setting up the 125 machine. What we're going to do now is we're going to unbox the machine. We're going to set the machine on a tabletop and this particular machine we're going to set up on a direct water system. Now you can set this machine on a um, base cabinet and you can run a, a pump up from the base cabinet just like your 325 and your 525. Uh, if you want um, a price on the base cabinet you need to contact a head office. For this purpose of this setup we're going to install the 125 machine on a direct water system. Now I'll go ahead and place it on top of a tabletop and we'll continue with the setup. So right now we've got the uh, 125 machine sitting on a tabletop. Uh, on the drain tray um, there'll be a set of keys. Maybe they've fallen off and they're in the box somewhere but the, the keys will be on the front somewhere. So let's go ahead and remove those keys and let's open up the door to the machine. So you notice the keys in the front of the door and then you can lift the lid and it can hang back on its own and there's also a little latch that you can uh, slide into the uh, hook and that will hold it in place on a little bit of an angle. And then let's remove uh, whatever's inside the machine right now. So there will be another pamphlet, uh, there will be machine information, Italian instructions which you know you, you just want to refer to the manual. Uh, your labels are here and inside the machine there are um, two metal rods which we will insert on top of the uh, machine lid. I'll show you how to do that in a minute. And then inside there's another little bag and it's components that you've seen a couple times already. There's the key for the brew group, there's a green override key and there's a couple additional uh, legs that can go on the underside but you probably won't be using those. So let's just put those off to the side for now. The first thing we want to do is probably just refer to your manual, your 125, and let's insert those labels. And here's your label sheet. Just follow those labels that are on the uh, in the service manual. Now, where to insert the labels are <coughs> underneath the lid. There are little slits just on the, on the right side, just to the right of the opening and there'll be four on the uh, right side and then there's four slits on the uh, left side. And so let's go ahead and slide those uh, labels into place and then we'll move on with our next part of the uh, setup. So let me give you a little more help on inserting the labels uh, on the underside of the lid. Under the lid on the left side there is four slits. Uh, one, two, three, and four, and there's like little white openings where you can see the uh, labels are inserted. So let me go ahead and insert the first label for you. Slide it up into the slit, and so th that's how the labels are inserted. I've already inserted the ones on the right side. Let me show you how th the front will look. So you'll have all your labels. The bottom right label is going to be a, a hot water label or whatever beverage that you want to have there. You can make a label up for that one. There's no label to go in there right now. So that's, we leave that open so that you can uh, you know, choose another beverage or a label. If you want it to be hot water, then you'd have to create a little label uh, to put a hot water tag there. Uh, there just isn't a, a label for the hot water. Most people use it as another beverage. And then go ahead and finish the other three. Uh, set them the same way uh, that the manual has them set up and we'll move on. So now we've got our uh, labels inserted. Again, the, uh, the bottom right one, if you're going to use that for hot water, you'd have to create a hot water tag or if you want to use one of the other labels and set that up as another beverage, uh, whatever you choose, you can do that. Uh, let's go ahead here and open it up. So I've gone, uh, taken the liberty of putting the uh, coffee, the chocolate and the milk labels on the canisters and you have a couple white strips of labels that are inside one of the uh, clear plastic bags. 
In the other plastic bag, the components I showed a few minutes earlier, the key, the override key, the brew group key, um, there's four screws and washers in there. Let's remove those and we will use them to set up the two rods that will sit on top of the 125 machine just like this. So when the rods are seated, from the inside when you lift the lid up, you'll see that in the, the bottom uh, left corner, bottom right corner, uh, top back and top right corner are where you want to insert the uh, washer and screw. So if you want to go ahead and do that, and then we'll move on to the next part of the setup. So let me show you where I have the four screws and washers installed for the two rods on the front uh, lid. The bottom left corner, bottom right corner, top right corner, and then the top left corner. And there's the two rods installed on top of the machine. On top of your 125 machine where we just placed the rods, there is, uh, looks like a cover that opens and people are under the impression that it's where you fill water. And I just want to show you that it actually isn't a feature that we use. There's a, a, a solid metal uh, chute there, so you, you don't ever want to try to open that up and push and, and bring any water down in here. Your machine, just like your um, 525 and your 325, has a reservoir in it that the water is brought up into the reservoir and then dispensed to the uh, boilers in your machine. So this machine, just like the other machines, have two boilers and a reservoir. So it's not uh, when the lid's down, you, you, you force that open and you can pour water and not, that's not the purpose on this machine. That's not usable. So if you like right now, what you can do is add product to your canisters, so coffee, chocolate, and milk powder. So just let me show you once again, the coffee canister, the chute, pulls out to the side. So you always want to keep it in this position when it's out of the machine, and then after it's placed in the machine, then you want to pull it out, and that'll open up, uh, allow the coffee grounds or coffee beans to drop down into the grinder. And also, on the back of the coffee canister, there's a little plastic uh, lip and it's going to hang over top of this metal lip inside the machine just to hold it securely, just like the 325 has. So go ahead, place it back down into position just over that lip and then you can go ahead, fill your three products up and we'll move on. So what we want to do now is remove the back panel of the machine. Uh, just remember, you just got to loosen those screws that are around the teardrop openings and then lift the panel off and then we'll uh, hook up our water line to the regulator. So now that we've loosened the screws, we're going to go ahead and lift the panel up and off the back of the machine. And just like your other machines, there's a green yellow ground wire. Pull that clip off and then set the uh, back panel off to the side. What we'll do now is connect our uh, water line to the machine. It's a standard uh, garden hose uh, fit. This particular line is pressure fitted onto the uh, uh, adapter and any time that you're installing a, a water line, a city water line, a couple things. One, you want to make sure that you've got a, um, a, a carbon filter somewhere on the line rather than just run city water into your machine. Uh, there's many different um, types and companies that make these water filters. They're on the market. Normally you just splice them into the line. Second, and maybe more importantly, when you're putting a water line on the machine, it's probably best to either have someone in the maintenance part in the maintenance department uh, where your machine is to do the work or have a plumber come in and install that water line depending on uh, where the source is coming to the machine. Uh, you just want to make sure that it's installed correctly. 
Okay, now that we've got our city water line connected, what we're going to do is power up the machine. So plug your power cord into the outlet, press the uh, red button for power, and now we're going to insert the override key, which goes on the inside of the door, pretty much the top center position. Just push the key in. Now again, it doesn't matter which way up or down, push it in and we'll have power. Now what we're looking for is water to start filling the reservoir in the back of the machine. So now we've got water uh, moving into the machine, the reservoir uh, filled up the first time and now it's filling the uh, boilers in the back of the machine. You always want to check your city water line, you, you always want to make sure there's no water leakage, no drips taking place. And once the machine uh, finishes filling the two boilers, uh, just like on your other two machines, you'll have the uh, first installation and the date to install. So now that the reservoir is filled and we're in first installation, the machine's asking us for the date. So the buttons work the same way they do on your uh, other machines. So the third button down will move the cursor over. Your espresso button will increase to the date. The fourth button will jump over to the uh, next field. Third button will slide the cursor over one. We'll go to the third month and it's already the 14th year so we're pressing our top right button, your mochaccino button it'll put the machine in heating mode. So let me show you one thing while it's heating. When you lift up the lid, underneath the lid there's two buttons on this machine. So the, mach the button on the right if you push that you'll see maintenance and again one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight will give you a rinse on the machine. So let's get water moving through the machine. So that's button on your right is your maintenance and then button number eight is your rinse button. That sound you're hearing is just a mixer motor and that's because there's no product or water uh, that's mixing together. So it's not uh, uh, unusual to hear that sound at the beginning. So let's do it again. So we've got maintenance on the screen still. If we push button number eight, You'll see cleaning clock and then it'll perform a rinse. We just like to see water moving through the machine. What that tells us is that the boiler in the back of the machine, your main boiler, is full of water. So the two buttons that I'm referring to underneath the lid are these two buttons right here. This one is your maintenance button and this button is the button that you go into when you want to go into programming or you want to go into sales, you press this button. So maintenance button on your right, programming button on your left and also your sales button on your left. Now what we want to do is uh, plug the programming unit into the machine to upload our uh, system settings, our machine settings. So what you want to do first is drop the power to the machine and now we're going to go around back and plug the programmer into the port. So now we're going to plug the programmer into the back of the machine. Uh, the 10 pin connection plugs into the uh, port, the black port in the back of the machine. The open side facing down is the same side that there's, looks like there was a little nub on the underside of the uh, 10 pin connection. So all we're going to do is plug that connection into the machine. And now we're going to go ahead and power the machine up. Just insert your green override key. and we're looking for menu to come up. So all you want to do is press your menu button. We're looking for the parameter file, so you press increment. There's our parameter file. Press enter. We want to upload. And we're looking for the 125 file, which is the first file that pops up. So that's the file that we want to upload. So we want to press enter. Upgrade request, yes, and then it'll copy the file over. Once it gets to 100%, just press escape once. Now drop the power to your machine, just remove your green override key. Now you can go ahead and unplug. Sometimes you find that you have to kind of wiggle it back and forth left to right and it'll slide out easily. Now we've got our machine programmed, now we can go ahead and power the machine up and let's make a couple beverages. 
So now that we have our machine uh, powered back on, let's go ahead and make a, uh, a mochaccino beverage. Remember, make sure the chute for the canister on the beans is pushed out to the left side. Make sure the covers for the uh, chocolate and milk product canisters, the cover is in the up or on position. So let's go ahead and make a mochaccino. There's our mochaccino beverage. Your maintenance and programming options on the uh, 125 are essentially the same as the 325 and the 525. So I'm going to go ahead and press the uh, maintenance button. If I wanted to go to maintenance 2, I would press the espresso button and it shows two maintenance. Press it again, it goes back to one maintenance. And this is if you ever happen to have an error on the machine and you're, you're, you're kind of sure that everything is okay. I would, first thing I would do is go into maintenance and then I would go your mochaccino button and just perform a reset and let the machine see if it's able to take care of whatever the problem is on its own and beyond that if it's not going to clear or there's a problem then at that point I would say give me a call, send me an email and let's figure this out. So to go into maintenance you press the maintenance button and to, to reset you press your mochaccino button and to get out of maintenance just simply press that right button, your maintenance button again. To go into programming you press the button on the left and that takes you to code 0000. And if you wanted to go into programming, you would change it to code 1. You would press enter, your fourth button down, and that takes you to your configuration menu. All the options and menus on this machine are the same as your 325, same as your 525 machine. So any options that you want to change, you would uh, approach them the same way as you did on uh, your other machines. To get out of programming, you would just hit your mochaccino button and that'll back you up and back you out and you can tell when you're out because you got all your lights illuminated. If you want to go into sales, you press the same button, your programming button, you have code 0000, no code required, same as your other machines, and just press enter. And that takes you to sales. And then scrolling through your options, you press the espresso button and that'll take you through your options. For instance, Paid selections is probably the one you're going to want to spend the most time on. Press enter and you see not erasable, just like your other machines, it's going to follow the life of the machine. Paid selections five and then it's got selection one, how many beverages, two, three and four and so on. If you wanted to uh, back out of that option, press your mochaccino button. If you wanted to look for your sales code, Scroll through the options using your espresso button, you see sales code. Press enter. Code five zeros. Sales code four zeros. Press enter. Do you want to change the code? No, you don't. Do you want to delete? Yes. Press your espresso button. Fourth button down. Enter. Clearing. OK. Once it's OK, press your mochaccino button. And now if you can scroll back down through the options, you go back to sales and paid selections, press enter and you see not erasable still five and then everything else has been zeroed out. Same as your other machines. Programming is all the same. To back out of the option, mochaccino and all lights illuminated tells you you're back out in regular operating mode. With the machine um, closed and powered on, I just want to point out a couple things on the, uh, the front of the machine. The drain tray, you can place a cup there or if you like there is a little uh, lever that you can pull down and there's another little uh, raised platform that you can place a cup up underneath. This is more for uh, a shorter cup, maybe a demi tasse for a shot of espresso or something like that. And you'll also see on the drain tray there's a little red button. It's a float. If the drain tray was full of water, that button would be elevated and that tells you that it's time to uh, drain that uh, drain tray because it's got waste water inside there. So let's go ahead and make ourselves a shot of espresso.
Once the beverage is done, blinking lights, it'll say remove product. It'll last only for a couple seconds and then remove your beverage. Now that we've finished our uh, setup and installation of our 125 machine, let's go ahead and put the back panel back on the uh, machine. And you can leave the power onto the machine when you plug the green yellow ground wire in. So go ahead, plug it into either spade. Slide the cover up underneath the lip. And then the screws want to go over top of the teardrop openings and just kind of slide it down into place. And then refasten the screws, just tighten them snug and you're, and you're done.